At 1.21 a.m., a routine message from a Boeing 777 went silent. 38 minutes after takeoff, flight MH370 simply vanished. A modern airliner carrying hundreds of people on a calm night disappeared from the sky without a trace. What happened in those final hours has never been fully explained. What followed was the largest and most expensive search in the history of aviation. Nations mobilized, satellites recalibrated, engineers, analysts, and oceanographers rebuilt the night from fragments of numbers and signals. For years, investigators have tried to reconstruct a timeline that never should have existed. Tonight, we retrace the last known movements of Flight MH370, minute by minute, signal by signal. This is the story of the final hours of Flight MH370. March 8, 2014, Kuala Lumpur International Airport. The terminal lights reflect off polished floors, passengers pull suitcases across the quiet concourse, and a Malaysia Airlines Boeing 777 waits at the gate. The aircraft is clean, well-maintained, and piloted by experienced crew. It is a routine flight to Beijing. 227 passengers from 14 nations, families returning from holidays, business travelers heading to meetings, students flying back to school, all stepping into a journey that should have lasted just over five hours. Boarding is calm, the sky is clear, the weather along the route is stable. Shortly before 12.41 a.m., MH370 begins its takeoff roll. Engines roar as the massive aircraft accelerates down the runway lifting into the night sky and banking northeast toward the South China Sea. Inside the cockpit, communication with Kuala Lumpur air traffic control is steady and professional. Altitude reports are exchanged. The plane climbs through 18,000 feet, minutes pass. Radar tracks the aircraft precisely as it nears the boundary between Malaysian and Vietnamese airspace. Then comes the final routine transmission. Good night, Malaysian 370. Two minutes later, the transponder stops. The aircraft disappears from civilian radar screens. One moment, it is a solid, reliable return. The next, it is gone. No emergency signal, no request for help, no indication of mechanical failure, just silence. Yet the aircraft is still flying. Malaysia's military radar continues to track an unidentified plane. A large object turns sharply west, deviating from its planned route. The maneuver is smooth, precise, intentional. It takes the Boeing 777 back over the Malaysian Peninsula, passing near the border of Thai airspace before heading out over the Strait of Malacca. For nearly an hour, the aircraft continues on this unexpected path. No communication from the cockpit, no signals from its transponder, just a ghost target drifting across radar screens. At 2.22 a.m., the aircraft moves beyond the edge of Malaysian military radar coverage and enters a space almost entirely unmonitored by conventional systems. This is the moment where the known world ends and the mystery begins. The next clues come from an unexpected source, a British satellite orbiting thousands of miles above Earth. The aircraft's satellite data unit, still powered, sends an automated digital pulse to the satellite network. This handshake, small, nearly meaningless on its own, becomes the key to understanding the aircraft's final hours. Between 2.25 a.m. and 8.19 a.m., MH370 sends seven pings. These signals do not carry location data. They do not contain voice recordings or flight information, but they reveal two critical details. How far the plane is from the satellite, and whether it is moving toward or away from it. Using these faint pulses, investigators map out the rough path of the aircraft, the first ping after radar loss shows MH370 still flying west. At some point afterward, it turns south, away from any landmass, into the heart of the Indian Ocean. No one knows why. The Indian Ocean at night is a vast, featureless void. Below the aircraft lies a thousand miles of open water, above it only stars. The aircraft continues flying on autopilot, hour after hour, pressing farther into one of the most remote regions on Earth. Pings 2 through 6 trace its steady movement, no deviations, no signals that suggest manual intervention, just a silent continuous flight toward the southern hemisphere, powered by engines burning through the night. The final full ping arrives at 8.19 am. One minute later, the satellite receives a broken logon request, evidence that the aircraft has lost power, likely due to fuel exhaustion. After its engines fail, the aircraft begins its descent with no thrust, no control inputs, and no communication. 
MH370 spirals downward toward the ocean. While the aircraft disappears into the sea, the world on land is only just beginning to understand what has happened. When MH370 fails to report into Beijing, confusion spreads through air traffic control centers in China and Malaysia. Hours pass before an official search begins. Initial efforts focus on the South China Sea, the expected flight path. Malaysian and Vietnamese aircraft scan the waters intensely. The first day yields nothing. As radar data becomes available, the search shifts west, then southwest. Satellite data pushes it even further, deep into the southern Indian Ocean. The region is known for violent storms, enormous waves, and currents that can move objects across great distances. Ships from multiple nations join the search. Australian rescue teams coordinate operations from Perth. American P-8 Maritime Patrol aircraft sweep massive areas with advanced sensors. Chinese icebreakers carve through waves searching for debris. The search zone stretches over millions of square kilometers, an area larger than many countries. But the ocean refuses to give up its secrets. The surface search finds nothing. No life rafts, no floating wreckage, no oil slick, just endless shifting water. Weeks pass, the search changes again. Underwater drones and sonar arrays are deployed to scan the ocean floor. The seabed is mapped in high resolution. Entire underwater mountain ranges are discovered. Cliffs, ridges, and valleys deeper than scientists previously knew existed. The search effort becomes the most advanced ocean mapping operation in human history. After more than a year, the first piece of physical evidence finally appears. A flaperon washes ashore on Reunion Island. It is positively identified as part of MH370. Oceanographers analyze wind and current patterns, determining that the part likely drifted for months from a crash site somewhere along the final ping arc. More pieces appear in the years that follow. Parts of cabin interior, fragments of wings, items from passengers. Some are confirmed, others are strongly suspected. All show similar drift characteristics, all point back to the same region. But debris can travel far. Even precise drift modeling cannot pinpoint where the aircraft entered the water. And the Indian Ocean is unforgiving, deep, unpredictable, and vast beyond comprehension. Investigators explore multiple scenarios to explain what happened on board. One involves rapid decompression, which could incapacitate passengers and crew swiftly oxygen masks would deploy, but only temporarily. If the pilots failed to respond in time, the aircraft could continue flying until fuel exhaustion. Yet this does not explain the deliberate turn back over Malaysia. Another scenario considers electrical failure, loss of critical systems, forcing pilots to improvise a route back to a familiar airport. But the aircraft's early precision turns imply skilled manual control, not random drift. Another theory suggests cockpit intrusion or hijacking. But again, no credible evidence supports forced entry or hostile intent. Investigators find no consistent pattern of terrorism, ransom, or coordinated attack. The most debated scenario involves deliberate action by someone in the cockpit. Investigators examine backgrounds, personal histories, flight simulator data, and psychological profiles. Most evidence remains inconclusive. The possibility exists. But without definitive proof, it remains one theory among many. Hours of flight data, radar traces, and satellite signals suggest a chilling combination of intent and abandonment. A controlled early maneuver followed by a long, unpiloted flight into the ocean. A moment of human decision followed by hours of silence. Most experts converge on a model of fuel exhaustion. The right engine flames out first, causing slight aerodynamic changes. The autopilot attempts to correct minutes later. The left engine fails. With no power, the electrical system shut down. The satellite system attempts a final logon. The aircraft, now a powerless glider, begins a steep descent. Models show that without human input, the descent would be fast, chaotic, and terminal. Some simulations suggest the aircraft entered a spiraling dive. Others propose a shallow glide into the water, but without the main fuselage, the exact final moments remain hidden. Despite the largest oceanographic search ever conducted, the aircraft itself remains undiscovered. Storms, undersea terrain, and enormous search areas make detection nearly impossible. The ocean floor in the region is irregular, jagged, and covered in sediment. The plane could rest in a trench on a mountainside or buried beneath underwater landslides. 
The disappearance triggers sweeping changes in global aviation. International bodies implement new standards requiring aircraft to automatically transmit their positions more frequently. Satellite tracking becomes mandatory for long-range flights. Cockpit communication protocols evolve to prevent long periods of silence. Airlines adopt updated safety procedures and monitoring technologies. But reforms do not ease the grief of the families. For them, the story is not data or models or theories. It is loved ones who boarded a plane and never returned. They continue to campaign for renewed searches, pressing governments and private firms to re-examine the case using new technologies, improved sonar, autonomous underwater vehicles, and refined drift models. In the years since, independent researchers have devoted countless hours to analyzing radar data, satellite signals, fuel burn calculations, and ocean drift predictions. Engineers build new simulations. Oceanographers refine models of Indian Ocean currents. Data analysts revisit the pings with updated mathematical methods. Every time, the results point to the same region of ocean. Every time, the wreckage remains elusive. The final hours of flight MH370 remain one of the greatest mysteries of the modern age. A symmetry of silence and distance, a puzzle built from fragments of digital signals and the unforgiving vastness of the sea. A jetliner disappeared in the era of satellites, smartphones, and global tracking systems. And yet, after all this time, so little is known. At 1.21 AM, a plane disappeared, and the world is still searching for what happened next.